This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Woman killed in Trelawney crash. A woman is dead following a motor vehicle crash along the Salt Marsh Main Road in Trelawney Monday evening. She has been identified as Christine Sharp of a Westmoreland address. Sharp died when a Toyota hire slammed into the Toyota Corolla she was driving. Eyewitness reports allege that the driver of the Toyota Hires was in the process of overtaking a number of vehicles that had stopped to allow Sharp access to the roadway. According to reports, just about six, Sharp was in the process of driving out from a restaurant onto the roadway when her vehicle collided with the Toyota Hires. Firefighters who arrived on the scene shortly after said they had to extricate the injured woman from the vehicle. She was taken to the hospital where she was pronounced dead. JDF Sergeant Slapped with a Murder Charge Jamaica Defense Force Sergeant Tiafalos Tracy has been charged with murder and illegal possession of firearm following the discovery of a dead woman in his vehicle on February 26. The charges were confirmed by his attorney at law, Peter Champigny, earlier yesterday in the Kingston and the St. Andrew Parish Court. Tracy is to appear before the gun court on Thursday, May 19. He was previously charged with failure to hand over his firearm to the police officers during the investigation into the circumstances surrounding the discovery of the dead woman in his car in which he was offered $300,000 bail. Tracy is to return to court on July 28 for mention of this charge. Tracy's bail conditions include the surrender of his travel documents, reporting to the nearest police station on Tuesdays and Thursdays between the hours of 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. He is to reside at the Clarendon address listed on file and a stop order was made. In relation to his earlier charge of failure to hand over his firearm to police officers, Tracy was made the subject of an identification parade. However, Champagny confirmed that even though arrangements were made to have Tracy participate in this parade on May 5, 6, 9, and 13, this was not done. The St. Andrew Central Police had reported that about 4.20 a.m. on Saturday, February 26, lawmen responded to an assignment of a motor vehicle collision. On arrival of the team, a gray Honda Fit motor car was seen with a woman's body protruding from the front passenger seat. The body was reported to have multiple gunshot wounds. Police said the deceased, who is still unidentified, appeared to be in her late 30s, is about 5 feet long and has a skin tone that shows evidence of bleaching. It was clad in a black blouse, purple sweatpants, and one foot of black and red Nike sneakers. Investigations that followed revealed that a motor car belonged to the JDF sergeant, who is also a licensed firearm holder. He was located and taken into custody. Wife and the children of Haiti's ex-senator to be deported. In an impassioned speech to the Kingston and the St. Andrew Parish Court earlier yesterday, the attorney at law representing the family of former Haitian Senator Joseph Joel John expressed his displeasure at the government's handling of their application for refugee status, resulting in the eventual deportation of his clients to their country of origin. John's wife Idume, 38, and her two sons applied for asylum in Jamaica through the Passport Immigration and the Citizenship Agency. The application was subsequently denied and an appeal was made. Moments before he addressed the court regarding Pika's denial of the refugee status, the family pleaded guilty to illegal entry into Jamaica and their attorney, Donahue Martin, requested that the court admonish and discharge them, causing the family to be sent back to Haiti. Your Honor, I do have instructions today to have this matter removed from the court list. Might I invite Your Honor to admonish and discharge the offenders? The reason for my application, Your Honor, is that the offenders entered the island quite literally with clothes on their backs as a result of issues in their place of origin. They had applied to our government to be considered refugees, Martin said, noting that he believes if his clients don't represent the definition of refugee status, then no one can do the same. So practically speaking, Your Honor, it is quite problematic for the persons to remain in custody in not the best conditions, and this is in the context of what I consider to be well-founded concerns concerning their safety as well, he continued. Adding that he is calling on the government to review their protocols 
concerning persons who are applying for asylum status, Martin stated, because this certainly is not the best example of how it is we should honor our international obligations. I do believe we can do better as a people because at any point the shoe can be on the other foot where it is that we might have some instances where us as citizens need to help our neighbors and we certainly wouldn't want to be treated like this. John has since been extradited to the United States as he is accused of conspiring to commit a murder or kidnapping following the July 7 assassination of Haitian President Jovenel Moise. John is the third person slated to be tried in Miami in the case of Moise. The family was held by police in Jamaica on January 14 during an operation in Warminster District, St. Elizabeth. UK resident and a Portland man killed in highway crash. A UK resident and a Portland man died on Monday morning in a motor vehicle crash on the Edward Sioga Highway in St. Anne. They have been identified as 50-year-old Glenn Ford Phillips and Luke Osborne, who resided in Moortown. It is reported that around 2.30, Mr. Phillips was driving a Honda motor car near the end of the toll road in St. Anne when he lost the control of the vehicle, which slammed into the back of a truck. The three occupants in the Honda sustained serious injuries. They were transported to the St. Anne's Bay Hospital, where Mr. Phillips and Mr. Osborne were pronounced dead. Bail extended for policewoman and spouse charged with ganja possession. Detective Sergeant Tamika Taylor and her common-law husband, Royan Harris, who are charged with possession of ganja, had their bail extended when they appeared before the St. Thomas Parish Court on Friday. The policewoman who is assigned to the Kingston Central Police Station and her common-law husband are scheduled to return to court on June 10. The prosecution on Monday informed the court that the case file was incomplete. The judge ordered that the file be completed and presented to the defense by the next court appearance. Wholeness-led government has turned its back on Jamaican's PNP claims. The People's National Party is claiming that Prime Minister Andrew Wholeness's popularity is falling and has urged its supporters to capitalize on this. Senator Donna Scott Motley told the PNP supporters at a Troja Divisional Conference in St. Catherine on Sunday night that Mr. Holness had turned his back on the people of Jamaica. Mrs. Scott Motley claimed this was evident with the rising cost for goods and services, adding that Mr. Holness has ignored the pleas of Jamaicans calling for a reprieve. He and his team don't see people anymore. They don't see what the people of this country are experiencing. They don't see the hunger, the poverty. They don't see the frustration which is happening in this country. Prices go up, not on a daily basis. If you go to buy some food and go back three hours after, it's a different price you're getting. You can do something about it. You could do as the Prime Minister of Barbados has done, and kept the tax on gas, even for a little time, for six months, to help us through this challenging time. Comrades, I want to implore you. Part of the reason why we have lost these elections is because our people have stayed home. Because our people have stayed home and turned their backs on the People's National Party. You have to work to get them back. We have to make a change. Enough of the Jamaica Labour Party. Enough of the pillaging of your money. Businessman Michael Issa's indecent language and the resisting arrest the trial starts. A policeman has told the court how businessman Michael Issa hurled abuse at him and the colleagues as they sought to arrest him in January. Detective Sergeant Michael Chisholm made the assertions in the St. James Parish Court while giving evidence at yesterday's start of the trial. Issa is charged with indecent language, abusive language, and resisting arrest in relation to a past firearm charge. He is being represented by attorney at law Michael Hemmings. Chisholm, who is the case's investigative officer, testified that Issa reported his firearm missing on December 17, 2021, but two days later indicated that it was found. 
However, Chisholm said Issa did not comply with instructions to submit the gun in for testing. The court was further told that on January 13, 2022, Issa went to the Montego Bay Police Station with his lawyer, Gordon Brown, for reasons unrelated to the firearm matter. The detective said when he confronted Issa about the gun, Issa hurled the expletives at the officers and they tried to resist when they sought to take him into custody. Meanwhile, presiding Judge Keisha Grant rebuffed Attorney Hemmings' objection to the prosecution's desire for the station diary to be brought in as evidence. Hemmings argued that the diary entry related to the loss of firearm charge, which had already been dismissed. The Crown is at liberty to call witnesses and the tender exhibits as they please. This court cannot lawfully fetter what the Crown decides to do, said Grant. The trial will continue on June 1, at which time the station diary is expected to be brought before the court. Issa was arrested and charged with a negligent loss of firearm, resisting arrest and indecent language on the night of January 13, hours after his stepson Gabriel King was murdered. It is understood that the loss of the firearm was not connected to the death of the child. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.